got into music through folk music. In fact, I, I was uh, a bit of a country music snob. My brother, older brother, who had owned the record player in the house, um, uh, had the, uh, you know, was always playing country music, and except for Johnny Cash, uh, I, I really didn't think it could hold a candle to Joan Baez and Bob Dylan and all this stuff. And um, uh, But uh, there was something about Dolly's voice. Yes, she was a country artist, but she had this pure mountain voice. And um, so uh, even though I was a huge Joan Baez wannabe, uh, I loved Dolly Parton. And um, eventually when I um, was converted thoroughly to country music, of course, uh, uh, I continued being a fan of hers. And so it was pretty extraordinary that I got to meet her and become friends and actually uh, work with her. Well, the Grand Ole Opry first started uh, at the Ryman Auditorium. The Ryman Auditorium, which I believe was like 1892, uh, was built by uh, a man who was converted to the Lord. He had been a bit of a debaucher, sea captain, and done all kinds of terrible things. And then he found the Lord, uh, Captain Tom Ryman. And he wanted to build a tabernacle where people could come and also find, find God. Um, and for a while, it, it was a church, basically. But then it became um, uh, kind of like a Carnegie Hall of the South. I don't know why we couldn't have the Ryman of the North and call, you know, the Carnegie Hall that. But anyway, I digress. Um, because uh, you have speakers, Teddy Roosevelt uh, spoke there, Anna Pavlova danced there, um, you know, a lot of music. Uh, um, it, it was just a, a great place for people to, to see people perform or speak. Um, uh, and, um, and, and the Grand Ole Opry was uh, started there, I believe, when uh, they started to broadcast it on the radio on WSM. Um, so um, it has such a rich history, and really anyone who's ever uh, considered anyone in country music, I think the idea was to play the Grand Ole Opry. Um, and... Um, then decades later, you know, we, we built the Opry House, which was outside of Nashville proper. But they do still have uh, uh, the Opry at the Ryman uh, several months of the year. And um, so the two kind of continue the tradition of the Grand Ole Opry. Perfect, thank you. I don't know. Back in 1973, uh, as a fresh country music convert with Graham Parsons, I was on the road, a uh, very funky tour with him, and uh, we ended up, uh, we were playing in, uh, playing in Houston at a great sort of uh, hippie honky-tonk called Liberty Hall. And um, I had seen Linda in New York City when I was a struggling, sort of trying to be a folk singer myself. I became very jealous. I couldn't believe how good she was. I didn't meet her at the time. But um, uh, she was playing in town opening for Neil Young. And they all, Neil band, Neil and his band, Linda and her band, ended up coming, uh, they were playing in the big, uh, uh, you know, arena across town. We were in the little funky honky-tonk. And uh, so uh, we met. Uh, she just came and it was like, okay, here are these two girl singers kind of doing country music. And one of the first things we revealed to each other that our favorite singer was Dolly Parton. And that was kind of the, the, at the very beginning of our friendship. Um, and so later on, I ended up recording a solo record, and I recorded my very favorite Dolly Parton song, The Coat of Many Colors. And so, and my record started to make some noise. You know, all of a sudden, I was kind of accepted in Nashville and came to Nashville. I think probably it was for the uh, CMA Awards show, and uh, someone arranged for me to meet Dolly Parton. She was uh, in her Dolly garb, very much Dolly, and uh, in the recording studio mixing something, wearing her six-inch high heels, and uh, it was just wonderful, you know. So, so that was our initial meeting, um, and then later, uh, when she was in LA and I was in LA recording. Linda was living in L.A. Uh, through uh, just those initial connections, uh, it was arranged for Dolly to come over to where I was living in Los Angeles and where I was recording. And so I called Linda and I said, um, 
Dolly's on her way over. So Linda got in her little MG, and uh, so we all met in this funky house in, in uh, off of Laurel Canyon, where I was recording. And uh, someone just, and we just figured, well, let's sing something. And so we did, and it, it was just a sound that just surprised us all. I mean, we all knew we were good singers, um, but. Um, then we thought, well, someday we should make a record. And it took us a while, but eventually we did. So that's the story of the trio. <laughs> I love those sessions that we did. We did two records together. And they're, I don't have a sister. I have a big brother, a wonderful, wonderful big brother, but no sisters. But really, when we were making those records, it, it was like we were sisters. And uh, Dolly is one of the funniest people. Yeah, she cracks me up. And, uh, and we kind of crack each other up, all three of us. So uh, it was a wonderful experience, uh, something I could have never imagined when I was a struggling folk singer in the streets of New York.